we got a big old voltage in here and we're gonna obviously get a roof on it but it also has quite a bit of delamination along the top and set some you can see, I don't know if you can see the wrinkle up above the slide out right there right there you can see it and it's just some in the back so it's got some delam on here I don't know if we're going to be addressing that or not so got some more delam right here see right there I don't think that's a shadow line maybe it is a shadow line yeah, that's a shadow line. That one is. But there's a just a few spots around that it has some DLAM. So let's go up here, like my stairs. So if you want to come take a look at your coach, you can walk up these stairs up, trying to hook on top of a ladder. So obviously you had some problems. Got this roof tape up on here, and then. Um, now what we're doing is just trying to take some stuff apart right here. I think there's just a vent. It's right here. This was the cover. It was right there. These are just what they call vents, I believe. But really, if anything, all they can do is, is it could be an access point. So if you want to try to run some wires, you may have to go inside, take the garnishment that's up inside there, that square plastic ring. Take that out, and then maybe you could fish a wire or whatever. If you want to put solar on here or something. This already has solar, so... But that's all that is. And then uh, obviously we got the refrigerator vent up. But this is that Dicor stuff they want you. I'm guessing it's Dicor. I don't know the actual brand name, but I know Dicor is a, a big player in these things. And you can see how it's all cracking and fracturing. And that's what it does. And they want you to keep putting more on. Yeah, you just put more on, more on. And you know, I joke and I say, hey, the only ones putting more on is a moron. There's something wrong with that system. You don't go put air in your tires every two or three months, do you? Why do you have to keep putting that on there? If they use a quality product, it should work. But they know it fails. They know it fails and they have not reformulated it. So, but that is their cash cow. So they're exploiting people's ignorance to root systems. Because you don't know about it, they're going to tell you. And obviously you want to trust them because you're buying it from them, right? They should know they're the RV people. They don't care. They don't give a crap about you. They just want to make some money. They slap these things together. Their, their motto is to get it built, get it out, get it sold. That's what that is. So obviously you can see they got some tape on here. Get some more yet, you know, self-leveling crap on that thing. So we're going to elevate all this stuff. Get it up off the roof line like it's supposed to be, you know. Look at all that cratering. That is, that's, that's basically what you would call, on a tar and gravel roof, when it does this, the UV light will kind of really affect it. And it looks like this. They call that gatoring, you know. And um, it looks like the back of a gator. I don't like the way this is. It looks like a leak right here, right in there. There's a hole right in there. So, but um, obviously we'll pull all this stuff up, but it's, it's just not a good performer. So you get these moisture that gets down inside there, and then when the moisture gets inside these cracks and it freezes especially, then it expands and opens up more. And now you got a bigger gap for more moisture to get in, and then it's dog chasing its tail. You know, you got another one right here, and another one right here. So these are, this is just a, this is just terrible system, terrible system. Again, they don't care. This is not how you do a commercial roof, not at all. So, but uh, now I don't know if all of these are plumbing or not, because um, you got two over there, get these two. That's quite a bit of plumbing. I, I very rarely do I ever see four plumbing on a coach. I mean, three is usually a lot, but. Um, so we're gonna, you can see they get some more issues here. There's nothing here. This is just the plywood and there's nothing protecting it. See that right there? That's, that's a leak. That is a potential leak right here. There's nothing there. So what happens, it rubs, look, how, look at that. It looks like a, a saw blade. Look how rough that is. So that's what happened. It starts chewing on it. So now as the coach is racking back and forth, it's literally sawing the membrane. You got a lot of these little ripples in here. See? You can even see each individual kind of ripple how they went down there, right? See? 
how it's whoop, like that. So all the way down. And that's what they did at the factory. So how would they think that would not leak? How would they think that that would last? They don't care. Get it built, get it out, get it sold. You know, oh, did you did you want us to fix it? Oh gee, whiz. Wish we could, but you're out of warranty. Well, you said it was a 10-year warranty. You said it was a 12-year warranty, whatever it is. Well, well, it is, but that's really not our fault over there. You know, you have to prove that the membrane, this, this here in itself, failed before you could get the company to warranty the membrane. And even at that, they'll just give you new membrane. That's it. No labor. So, but this is a uh, factory. That is factory stuff. That's a factory defect. And the sad part is, even if it did rip apart, right? If it ripped apart, and if an insurance inspector was pretty sharp and looked at it, they could deny that claim, even though your roof is off, because they would say, hey, you know what, that's manufacturer's defect. That has nothing to do with us. And they'll bounce the ball right back to you to have, you know, you pay for it. But they'll walk away from it, you know? They'll see that right there and they'll go, oh yeah, look at all this. Hmm, that doesn't look like a tree branch hit it. Nope, that's not what it is. It's this. And they can, they can, depending on your insurance. I'm just saying they will. I, I don't make that decision. But I'm just letting you know what I've heard through the grapevine. You know, if it's a manufacturer's defect, they typically don't want to pay for it. So insurance companies really don't want to pay for anything. So right here was the ladder. It had that kind of hook ladder. It had four feet on it. And you can tell how much water was getting in there. That's already got some damage under it. This is EPDM rubber. This is why I hate it. Two reasons. One, it shrinks. And when it shrinks, it starts pulling. It starts pulling in. And when it does, it makes that tighter. Now with the coach racking, now that abrasion that's on there because they didn't put any protection makes it worse. And when it rips, it will rip. This stuff is terrible. This EPDM rubber is literally the cheapest product on the planet. So uh, in the RV industry here, this is how cheap it is. So you got the white on here, and then you got the black on the back. Um, ironically, the product that I have, which is a TPO, that's what we use. I don't use rubber. It has the black on the back. And there's somebody out there saying, well, if it's, if it's um, got black on the back and, and white, then it's rubber. So it, that's only in the RV industry. That's only in the RV industry, not in the commercial roof industry. So... Um, but all the years, and my, my background is commercial roofs, structurality, that type thing, general contractor by trade. Um, that being said, the, uh, I've never put down one roll of this rubber. Never. Uh, I don't like it, never liked it. And I've had people, you know, customers or, co or companies send me blueprints, say, hey, can you give me a bid on this project? And you look down at the key, and it'll tell you what they're... And the legend in there, it'll tell you what they're going to use for a membrane. And I'll see EPDM rubber and I call them up and say, hey, can we change that out to TPO? And, oh, no, 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 we're not going to do that because it's more expensive. And uh, I say, okay, well, I'm not going to bid on it. I'm not interested because it doesn't last. Um, it's just, this is, the worst, this is the worst and cheapest product on the planet. I call these starter roofs. Every project that I've seen that has rubber on it has never made it past the, the, uh, the warranty, okay? So you can get pretty good rubber on here, but where it usually fails is all your transitions, just like these do. Because you, they rely on pressure sensitive tapes and things to try to make them watertight. And also, lap sealant. That's the, that's the process. That's why it doesn't work. So we'll end up elevating this and we'll get the solar off of here. Um, this is not recommended at all. Even though they give you these brackets, uh, this is not a good mix right here. Screwing it right to the roof, that's one. The other thing is, you need to keep this elevated at least two and a half inches off the roof deck, off the roof deck, because if you don't, that panel gets real hot and it will degrade this roof system. So, and you can, all that is all stipulated in the tech data sheet when you buy your membranes and so forth. There's a lot of things that people don't read and they call themselves professionals and they call themselves contractors and they've never opened up a, lot, a, a code book. They've never looked at a tech data sheet and they wouldn't know where to find one um and that doesn't make sense to me i mean that's part of your job that's why people are going to you because you're claiming you know this or that and they're trusting you and then they turn around and come to find out well you didn't know what you were talking about you had your head up your ass and uh you're just out there to take their money but because you've been doing it uh, a couple of few years you think you're a pro at it and you know more than everybody else 
Uh, it's a shame. It's a shame. There's, I'm always looking at different stuff. If I pick something up, I'm always looking at even the stuff that I've worked with to get a refresher to make sure they didn't change something on there. Maybe they found out something that somebody uh, maybe down the road, hey, something changed. You know, don't use it on this, that, the other thing. You know, but years ago they thought it would be okay, but now they're realizing, hey, it doesn't work. You know, for that's just an example. But I'm just saying uh, that's the way I am. I like to see what's going on. I like to know what's going on. I want to do a great job. I don't want the customer to have to come back because of a workmanship failure. You know, this, when we get done with this, this is a 20-year roof system. You shouldn't have to put another roof on. You should be done with it, you know? But um, anyhow, we get some more DLAM over here, too. That, that shouldn't be... It should be solid. You can kind of hear that. You can hear the... That's hard. That's a thud. All these screws are all rusted. So the insert trim that they use, it just slides in that track. I think there's it's, some of it's right here. Let's show you that real quick. Then I'll we're gonna start tearing this off. But it just slides in. It sits in there. See how fit, see that little track down in there? Fits in there and it snaps in. We're not gonna put this back in, but that's what it does. So what we're gonna use is gonna go in that track and over the other track it's got a groove in it that's what we're going to use to conceal all that much better product um, much more expensive product but it just works better so you don't come in and get an RV roof put on and then you know get cheap on putting on insert trim that that doesn't make sense you know that's not fair so uh, alright well let me get to work and we'll tear all this off we're going to tear the decking off we're tearing everything out we'll go down and if this is the first time you're watching the videos uh, we're going to end up checking all the trunk lines, we check the electrical, check the trusses, check everything up underneath this thing to make sure everything is all set before we just commit to putting a roof on it and find out that, you know, the trunk lines, the tape that they use was failing or uh, a lot of times they'll run wires over the trunk line and just from the movement it starts to create a hole in the trunk line and now all that cold air is coming up in between the trusses and it's not. So we check all this stuff. We'll show you when we open it up. All right, this is our voltage. Got a little dry rot back here. That's not the end of the world. I'm not going to tear it sailing out for that. Well, uh, we'll get that fixed though. We'll see if we can get inside there. So a lot of times we put see, we put these in here. Those are just bushings. These are uh, electrical code. Let's see if I get one that you can see the pack on. Now when I say they're electrical code, they are like on commercial and residential. But that's all they are, just bushings. And what they're designed to do is to protect the wire. So down inside there, see if I can get a flash out to tell you. There's a metal ferrule down there. And sometimes it'll compromise this wire. And we want to protect that. So all it is, when I say they won't put one more red cent into your coach, well, here it is. So we put these in here to protect it from that ferrule. The ferrule is just a, a piece of pipe. So when you put a screw coming through this side here for the gutter, you don't put it through the wire. That's pretty smart. But the inside of that ferrule has a sharp burr. It's almost like they cut it with a tubing cutter. If you've ever cut a piece of tubing, you reach your finger inside and you'll feel a burr. And that burr is what aggravates the wire. So uh, we got that. Then uh, so we got those put in. Then most all of these trusses look okay. Uh, I've got one that just looks a little compromised right here. So we'll put a splice on this one. And we'll bring it over and I'm not going to take the truss out. We're just going to repair this truss and give it some strength. And also we're going to just need it probably possibly for a nailer because hopefully it's trying to see if it's a, a break. You know, it may be a break. Right here I can see a screw hole. Or a nail hole. Yeah, that's what they use. Do they use nails? No, they use these tiny little screws. And they put them here and they put them there. You can't put too many screws on these things because this itself is obviously wood. It, this is not synthetic OSB. But if you keep putting a whole series of screws, you're going to split this thing apart. So that's why they put them sporadically. But even doing that, they don't. Um, there's no. As you can see, there's no glue on any of this. 
you want to glue these down. So then I'm looking at stuff like this. What we're doing now is going around and we're taping everything up. That we did is put some protection as a plate on top of there and then what we did is just taped it on. So now, because these wires rub back and forth and then they create a hole, that's just foam. This is just a foam uh, ductwork, that's all it is. So it ends up making a hole in there. And then all your air is coming up through the ductwork. So we're gonna fix that and we're probably gonna fix this joint right here. Obviously fix the joint. And I see this other joint right here and the about caved in this way. So we're probably gonna break that joint and put something in there like a piece of metal, like a little coupler to bridge it up a little bit to get better airflow back there. But you know, just looking at it, a lot of it's like that. Even over there, that other one you can see it's see if I zoom up a little bit, but you can see it's kinda all the way. Even this one. It's all failed. Um, I mean it's still gonna push air, but it really should be opened up a little bit. It just probably help. But uh, you can see another one over there. We got a tape up right there. So these are things we're looking for. And once we get all that, then uh, we're gonna add a truss in here or so. So we can, this runs all the way up inside here. We're not gonna be able to reach inside there because that truss is way back there. We're not gonna be able to get inside there to get that sheathing out, I don't think. So even if we don't though, we'll put a little truss right here and we'll carry the two of these together. So we'll see how that works out. But uh, you know, also we just gotta be careful with what's in there. Make sure if we do try to reach in there that we're not cutting any wires, of course. So this is where we're at so far. Overall, it's not as damaged as uh, you would think. You know, I know it's got some DLAM on the sides, but uh, that wasn't in the work order. That's gonna be a lot of work to tear it apart. We'll uh, address that later if they decide they want to deal with it later. So, uh, all right. Otherwise, let's get to work and we'll give you an update. All right, so what we're going to do here, we've got a piece of foam. And you can see we got a gap here. He's going to go inside and jack that up. When he jacks it up, we're going to put this piece in here. We're going to glue it in. And then that'll give some strength to this whole sheet. So it just doesn't want to sag. It, but it's not worth trying to tear all this out just for that little bit. It, this is still good. All that's still good. It's just all crumbly. It's not wet anymore. There's no mold. There's nothing like that in there. So we'll put this like so this whole big piece on there. It'll span all the way down here past this vacuum. So we got all that. We got all our redheads in there. And then uh, we got all that together. All these trusses seem pretty good, except for the one I showed you, which is right here. So we uh, made another keyway in it. That's how we do put them all together. Put a keyway in there. Now it's all back together and it's all strong. It's sitting on the wall over here. So other than that, we're ready to go. We're getting ready for decking. We also got the uh, all the ductwork. We got all that taped up. There was another one over here. Where's that squirrely one that had the hole in there? But we taped them all up. I think it was right there. It was right in here somewhere. We got them all taped up. So everything's good now. Now all we gotta do is, like you said, get the decking on here. After we, you know, get uh, get that other piece back there all squared away. All right, so what we got, obviously the decking down. Then uh, this deck was like 100 or something like that. What was it? 102 and a half. So um, obviously we had to put in a splice. What we did is we alternated it. So we got this one here. We got the other one over there, and then it goes back and forth every other sheet, right? And then we also glued them together. So I want to make sure everything was as tight as I can make it. Obviously, all the decking is all glued down. We staple everything. Uh, those staples are going to hold real well. These these are designed for sheathing. So typically, you go to tear this apart, you'll rip the plywood apart where you're going to get those staples out. So here's the next one. So one there, skip this one. This little piece is on that other side. And then you got this one. And like I said, we glued everything all together. So now what we're doing, we've got these shoulders that are gonna go on here. And they just go on like this. What, they're, what I'm trying to do is protect the roofing as it's coming around from this sharpness right here. And I think I showed you before how they did it. They had all these little burrs up there. So this will lay right on there like that. And then we'll glue this down too. We glue it down, we'll fasten this down, and then uh, the roofing can come over nice and tight, makes a nice clean corner. So it'll look real good once we're done. So that's what we got so far.
We got uh, some wires over there for the solar. And we'll pull all those up. We got an antenna wire up. That's about us. We got some plumbing. All right, so now we've got this is the passenger side. We've got it all glued. This is the driver's side. That one's already been glued, obviously, and rolled out. So now this one's glued. We got to roll it out, but you can see we got our buffer strips in there. We got our shoulder protection over here, corner protection right here. So everything's all protected. So we're just waiting for what we call flash off. And once it gets real tacky, which hits real close, she so has a couple of wet spots, and we're going to roll it over. And then uh, we can start cutting and getting the whole roof assembled. We are done with our big old voltage. She's ready to go. I want to start off by thanking the uh, folks here for coming all this way for us to put this roof on. They're all the way down in Florida. So it's a little bit of a travel and make all those arrangements. We really appreciate it. We're honored that folks come as far as they do. And that's why we take the time to do what we do. Because, you know, folks come this way because they're like, hey, I want to get it done, get it done right. I want to hassle with it. And that's, that's what we do for them. So we're not the fastest shop, but we're not out here to break any records in regards to speed-wise. We want to make sure the roof's put on proper and... Uh, they don't have any issues with them. So, then we put a stamp on here. That's basically for us when they come back for inspections. We like to really see how the roof is performing. You know, then we can go, hey, how old is this roof? And it could be, you know, seven years from now. Maybe, you know, 2030. Oh, well, seven years is doing really good. You know, if it looks like it's premature failure and so forth. Or if they go to sell this coach. And these typical RV roofs are notorious for leaking. So that being said, and you say, hey, we just put this roof on in July of 23. So all the components that are on here, uh, we had to, we, we make ourselves. We don't sell anything either, just to keep that in mind. We don't sell anything. All these curbs and everything, they're all proprietary to us. And they're all heat welded in. So these boots right here, they're all heat welded in. And this is a special sealer that goes in there because these things move around a lot. When you sit here and, you know, and pull on them, they usually wiggle around. This is a four stand, but if it was a ladder going down, it would have more wiggle to it and typically that's how the caulking would breach and then you have some issues with uh, rotted wood because the water obviously water get in there so the uh we got two strikes of caulking all along everything we placed all the insert trim running around all the lights here so we put some gutter spouts on the end and again all this is all heat welded in here in the same way all these screws that are in here every one of them are sealed Let's see if i pop that out there it's in there pretty good. I'll show you how it goes in. You can see that little groove. That little groove sits in the track. Okay, but you can see all these screws, they're all sealed. Every one of these screws are all sealed up. And that's the way we like to see it. But it'll just sit right in that track like that. And then the water will come down and it'll roll right into the gutter. So I'll show you the difference. I have a sample, I'll show you the difference of it. But uh, all these curbs, they're all heat welded. Everything's all heat welded. We put some feet on the back over here to give the air conditioner some balance. This particular unit, they roof mounted, meaning it mounted right from the roof this way. I mean, granted, they're all roof mount air conditioners where they are all on the roof, but this one actually gets secured down from the top this way. So uh, we made up some special boots right there and we bolted them down. Let's see if I can get in there and zoom up. See if you can see the bolt coming through. There's the bolt right there. So it's just got a 9 16 nut on it. It's all galvanized. So now, if they have any issues with their air conditioner and they gotta take it off, I mean, it could just get, simply get bolted down the way it should be. Um, the, I had another way I did it, but this is, seems to be a lot simpler. And I try to make things where someone come behind us if they have to do any work. They don't have to really go crazy trying to figure it all out. You know, they, or if they even had to replace this unit, they can just drill those couple of holes in there and they could mount it a brand new unit if need if it really needed one. So we got the uh, up underneath this air conditioner is a foam gasket. And I've got this front count that's called a counter flash right here, this piece here, that black piece that's going around. So now when the rain comes down, if you're especially if you're traveling, I don't want the wind to blow the water back into that foam gasket. Although it's waterproof, I just like to keep water away from where it doesn't need to be. So that being said, I put this counter flash on here. So that counter flash will, when it rolls down, will go below. There's another counter flash on the curb and I'll show you what that is. So if you look at this one, you can see there's a little tab that sticks over. There's a little tab that sticks over, but that's called a counter flash. 
and the purpose of it on here is when you're driving and the water is just even on if you're not driving but you get some really pushing rain and it wants to come up on the curb it'll hit that counter flash that it, that's in there and then it'll get redirected so it's not coming up over your vent and in this case this piece is going below that counter flash there's one there too and it pushes it down below it so the water will travel out of there hopefully I explained that right then uh, obviously we put some solar on put some aluminum rails on here obviously again they're all bolted down these are 916 galvanized bolts that we put all in there so we got all that squared away and then we ran another rail going across over there we did that so you could connect the wires up and that's how we brought all that together made another um, curb for that antenna so the whole idea if you were to go online and look at commercial roof images you're going to see air conditioners you're going to see vents you're going to see skylights you're going to see all these things elevated up off the roof line on a box those box are called curves so you can't buy these curves these have to be custom made so i have to make every single one of these and i custom make all the boots for like that plumbing right there i custom made all these little boots for these I custom make every single thing for these coaches so here's another just a different style of an air conditioner but we get the same counter flash coming down and again that'll push it you can you may be able to see that counter flash little tab if you look in the corner right there that's that's the counter flash on the top so basically all it is the lip it's a lip on there I may be able to show you around the other side Here's the counter flash we build in right here water comes driving up it's going to come up like this and the water is going to get redirected it minimizes any erosion effect that's the whole idea to it so we made these through this is a solar fan this is plumbing this is a solar fan so typically what happens on these lenses is when the dew sits on there especially in the spring or even the cooler mornings you, know, you get some dew on there and when that dew's sitting on there, not only is it on, on the top, it's actually on the inside, up underneath. So now the sun comes up, it'll evaporate this off. But what's up underneath, the UV light can't get at to evaporate it. So it just basically condenses it, make, you know, condensation. And then it'll roll down on the inside of the lens. And then that's how you get basically known as dry rot. You'll be like, I got a leak, I got a leak. It's not, it's not a leak, per se. But now that you get all that water coming in there, it's going to show up and kind of mimic a leak. But it's not really a rain leak it's a condensation leak what that'll do is it'll rot out all around the skylight and then eventually when it rots that out then the sheathing comes loose and the caulking comes loose and now you got a dog chasing its tail so what i did is i designed up this is an intake right here it's a vent and there's a trough that goes down inside this cavity right here into the curb there's a trough there you got an inner lens the inner lens is up here so now when the sun comes up evaporates this off solar fan kicks on air starts drawing and it goes over the inner lens but it's inside here and it comes down and out that being said if for any reason this pops off you can take any one of those plumbing even this one here I'm trying to go slow with the camera I've got a couple of comments more than a couple say that people get sick of my camera work that's all squirrely and Maybe it should be sponsored by, was it, adrenaline? You know, the seasickness medication? <laughs> but anyhow, if this pops off, then you want to take one of those caps or that one that I just showed you and put it on here. If those, water gets down in there, it's only going into the holding tank. There's no way water can get anywhere else but in the holding tank, the way I designed them. And this one, same thing. This, though, will go into that cavity because it's trying to pull air. So it's just going to be open. And then we put a piece of foam in there it's a basically a filtered foam so this way it'll pull air but it keeps the wasps and bees out last thing you want is have all these bees up inside there and then you'll notice on here too we don't put any screws down these things are always known to just fracture out um all the years i've do, been doing them when we did screw them down they're just problematic uh, no matter what you do you could drill out the hole you can make it bigger you can take a self-centering bit you could torque them down with a torque wrench it doesn't matter they're gonna crack so the way these crack is because you got a lot of heat sitting on them and these really um, expand and contract quite a bit. So now you get that heat sitting on there and it's causing this thing to swell. Then you got a thunderstorm and it'll contract real quick. And when it does, 
it'll pull on those screws basically real quick or even when it's expanding it'll kind of expand into those screws and then you get all these little hair fractures so we don't we just use a special adhesive to bond these down that's what we do I've never ever had one of them come off in fact it's hard to take them off if somebody does crack them it takes a while to get this all freed up it's just you know almost like windshield glue so or windshield adhesive so you can here's the the power coming out and then the power comes up supplies these two right here and then that's what that rail is to supply the other ones over that way so that's our uh, that's our our roof so far then we get two strikes of caulking all the way across here everything is two strikes of caulking right here and the reason I put two strikes on there so when we put this piece on this gutter piece when we initially put that on there um, that's all glued on and then I showed you all the screws are all glued as well okay or caulk sealed however you want to call it so then what happens is we strike this down because once we put it on there it'll burp up we strike it down when that cures we put one strike on it when that cures we put a second strike on it and the reason we do that if you've ever run a caulking gun and you start squeezing the, the trigger you'll hear it pop or crackle you just injected an air bubble so that if going down the road these things rack and twist and flex quite a bit that being said I would hate for the air bubble to now breach and now you've got a potential leak even if it be a small one it's a potential leak so I figure what are the chances of having one um, air bubble land on top of another if you put a second strike on there right so when we mounted all these I use these uh, these uh, nylon lockers so I don't want them backing out so we use those and uh, that's about us so let's see what else uh, the warranty the way the warranty works this system is a 20-year roof system this material is 20 years so even on the camper you're buying now, it's going to be whatever, 10 years, 12 years, I don't know, maybe they'll tell you it's 20, who knows. But that's only for the membrane, meaning this material. You have to prove this material failed before they'll do anything about it. So we'll say it does fail. It failed. Hey, the material failed. It's no good. There was a, a fly in the ointment, so to speak, right? So what they're going to do is just send you more roofing and go, hey, we're sorry. They're not going to pay for labor to have it all put on. So a lot of roofing companies are all the same way. Uh, when you get into commercial stuff, that's a little different, but we're just talking about RVs for now. So they're all the same. So that being said, I don't want someone coming through my shop and then we slap a roof on and go, hey, see you later, bye, thank you for your money. We don't do that here. The way we warranty our roofs is real simple. You come back every year. Initially, we have an initial inspector. I like to see it no, no more than 60 days after I do the roof like to see a little sooner than that but no later than 60 days because I want it to move I want it to rack twist flex I want it to do all that motion and commotion so I can see if everything is still holding up you know all the caulking is okay although everything is okay the way it should be if I get another uh, voltage in here I swear it's gonna rack and twist and flex differently than this one it's just the nature of physics all that being said we check it out good to go come back every year thereafter so now you come back for your initial your next your warranty is going to get extended from this is 23 so it was July so we'll say they come back in uh, September then the warranty that we give them is going to be from September of 23 to September of 24 you come back in September 24 we're going to give you a warranty from September 24 to September 25 so we do that keep rolling that you know warranty every single year we roll it over so we do that for 20 years so we'll say you miss a year and you're like oh man I missed a year you will fall out of warranty you will and you just call us up you bring your coach in we'll inspect it we'll put you right back on warranty so we're not trying to like other shops I know that they try to do their best go up oh, you're out of warranty too bad we don't want anything to do with you and it's a way of shaking liability you know or, or any basically denying anything you know to them that's their way of doing it. I don't know kind of old school I think if you do the job right it should last a long time but I want to see what's going on with the roof at the same time. If it's something I can fix simply, I want to fix it simply and not have a customer come in and go, hey, listen, I've got all these problems now. And I go, you know, this could have been fixed like real easy had we seen your coach. And then it turns into where, you know, now I'm redoing a lot more work than, you know, is even fair, right? So um, we had a customer, an example, especially those skylights. I can't warranty the skylight. I can't warranty the fan. I didn't make either one of those. You know, honestly, I, I mean, I didn't warranty the material, but, you know, we can always fix. This is one thing that we stand behind is the actual roofing, the roofing installation, things like that. That's what we do. Obviously, I don't stand behind an air conditioner. I don't know nothing about it. We don't do them. So 
all that said, that's how the warranty works. To um, wash this, all you have, you can bring it to a truck wash if you want, and you can have them just pressure wash it, or you can wash it with some regular dish soap and a brush. Get up here and just hose it down. It's that simple. It's that easy, and it'll come back just as clean as this. So the material that we're talking about is right here. And this is, if you want a sample, just let us know. There's our number right there, 423-475-7663. Or you can send us an email. It'll be contact us at rvroofinstall.com. So you can just ask for a sample if you really want to see it. But this is a real commercial roof. And you can get one anywhere if there's a commercial supply house near you. You can get a sample of it. But um, the difference with this is, this is a 60 mil you know, compared to, you know, RV grade. This is a 60 mil, and you can see those little squares in there. Those little squares, that's a reinforcement. Let's see if I can show you a piece up here. You can see that little fiber? That's reinforcement in there. It's known as a structured membrane. And what that does is it helps resist against hail and helps resist against tree branches and things like that. If you did get a rip in this roof, we leave folks with a care package. So this way, if they get a rip wherever, you know, a tree comes popping down, they can fix it pretty easy for an emergency, then they bring it to us and we'll do an emergency patch, or excuse me, a, a patch on, a long-term one. We do hot, hot patch is what I'm getting at. So we can do all that for them, uh, but I, we still give them, this roof system is able to, to be patched is my point compared to an RV roof. You can't just take that peel and stick stuff and put it on there, which when you see the end of the video and you go, hey, all he's using is a roof sticker. Well, it is, but it's not a long-term fix. Those are just to make sure you don't get any water in there for the time being until you get it back to us. That's what that's all about. So, but for a long-term fix, no, you, that tape is not something that I would, you know, uh, stake my life on. So, um, again, this is so this is a 20-year uh, material warranty on this type of roofing, and it's a commercial-grade TPO. TPO is thermal plastic, which means it all welds and heats together. That's how all that works. So, uh, these inserts and everything. We changed all that, and oops, wrong one. Although we're not using black, I use this because it probably shows up a little better. This is your typical, your typical uh, insert. All it does is just snap in. You see, it just kind of snaps right in there. And what I don't like about it is that the water can still travel down and go into that track. Where what we use is right here. It's got a groove in it. And that groove sits in this track here, and it sits there. So it's on the inside of the track and on the outside of the track. So it's on both sides. So it really does a much better job of keeping water out. So uh, we don't sell anything here, just keep that in mind. I mean, I've got to buy this stuff two miles at a time, literally. So, um, you know, again, we don't sell anything here. We don't sell any curbs. We don't, we don't sell a thing. We're just a service center. That's all we are. But. Um, we, and again, also keep in mind, these are not DIY videos. There's a lot of work we do behind the scenes, and, and I just don't show all that. These videos will be too long, and, uh, you know, you just, there's a lot that happens, and I don't want someone to say, hey, I know how to do it, and they go ahead, and then it doesn't work out, and the next thing you know, they're cussing me because, hey, I saw it on your video. There's a lot of other stuff we do. So, um, all that said, just give this a, a like, I guess, and anybody else looking for RV roofs. I guess it shows up from what I hear. Um, otherwise, we we'll see you on the next one. We appreciate y'all watching. Care package. Right. So in our care package, we have caulking. We got primer. We have got two patches. Those are heat patches. We got a patch, peel and stick patch. We got a checker tool. We've got a magnet. And the rest of this is just pens, keychains, brush nozzle okay so if we have a hole in the roof it will simulate a hole you can do hole simulations we say we got a hole there here's your tree branch come through and you're like oh man i got a hole in my roof it's leaking so what you want to do and it's raining out right now it's raining you're like crap i gotta stop that leak you want to get in there and if you can't get that nozzle in there don't worry about it make it a little bigger You try and do you need to get up underneath the roofing like this. This is what we need to do, get up underneath the roofing. Then you're gonna take and you're gonna put this up inside there and you're gonna
squeeze, 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 squeeze. Hopefully this thing is plugged up. There it goes. Just squeeze, squeeze. I'm going to try and get up underneath this part too. Squeeze up underneath there. Get some more underneath there. But well, we are getting this thing all boogered up. But then what we're going to do, you're going to push it together. See how it is out? That's sealed. You're done. This is a moisture cured product. So what? It's a hot mess. Looks terrible. Who cares? Keep the water out. So now, the next day, we're going to go up there, and that's going to be cured looking like that. So we're going to take a knife, and you just shave it down. You just shave it down with a knife. I'm just going to obviously wipe this off. Now you say, hey, I want something a little better than that. So what we're going to do is get some cleaner. This is a terrible rag. You get another one. You got one on you? Oh, get a rag, get a rag, get a rag, get a rag, get a rag. Hey, what are you doing? What are you going to talk about, man? Nope, just leave it alone. Oh, leave it alone right now. Uh, we recording now? Are we on? Yes, sir. Okay. Alright, so now we cleaned it off with a knife. I just washed that off because it's still wet. Take that off. So now we got a patch. This is a peel and stick patch. We're going to take that, we're going to center it over there. Just take a pen and go around like this. I like to kind of put a dash like that so I know who's where, what, and where and how. So now there, there's what I got. So in the package, we got primer. We also have a brush. I'm going to take that. You're going to go all inside the square. You're also going to go outside this square about three eighths of an inch. Outside about three eighths of an inch or so. so. Once you get that, there's a film on the back. You peel the film. Now you know which side you are. See, because there's, there's your marks. And you peel that film back. I get the fingers, fingers in there to get a get the film off of this thing. This is just a regular roof tape. That's all it is. We put them in all the care packages. Get that daggum thing off of there. Probably need some fingernails. Probably help. Uh, come on. There it is. Okay. Oop. Hey, huh? Hey, there it is. Now you got the film. We we'll take that film. So now we're gonna line it back up with this. We already got the primer under there. You just peel the film back, and as you do, you just rub it down like this. Sometimes that film will get a little stuck in there. This is just a butyl. You just kind of try to keep it as even as you can and flat as you can. Boom, you're done. There it is. So now, out here. This is where your primer is. You put the primer on there. You got primer there, and now you're going to put primer here. You want to prime all this area with your brush. Prime all that. Then you're going to come back. Once you get it all primed, then you're going to put a little bit of caulking on it, just like this. That simple. It doesn't all sit in there. You can always take your finger and go around it if you want. We're trying to obviously stop a leak and make one of a, there's going to be a, a little more permanent of a patch than just that that plug that we did when it was raining so now that we get that all done what the whole purpose of it is this part here this part underneath here that's a butyl when the sun hits that if you didn't have the caulking on there it will cause it to release and curl up just like i'm doing here and it'll start coming loose that's why you need the primer that's why when you prime it, you're going to prime on top of this because nothing will stick to it. Nothing, the caulking will not stick to this patch and it won't stick to the roof unless you use the primer. That's how you do a patch. Ta-da! All done.